What is up guys? We're going to be running a directory traversal exploit. And in particular, we're going to be answering the question, what is non-recursive sanitization? Because we're going to be able to exploit the fact that this web app is non-recursively sanitizing the input string. So let's take a look at our lab. The title is file path traversal, traversal sequences stripped non-recursively. And the objective of this lab is to retrieve the contents of the Etsy password file. No problem. Let's take a look at our lab. So the first thing we're going to do is add our lab to the scope and we're going to filter out any of the noise. We're only interested in our target here. And we know that these image requests are vulnerable. So let's fire up one of these images in a new tab and let's send the subsequent HTTP request to the BERT repeater. And let's fire up the repeater tab in burp. Now we can see it doesn't actually have the query parameters here. So we're just going to add those manually. If we have a look in the URL bar, we can see that the param is file name and the value is 65.jpg. So let's just add that to our request. So file name is the param value 65.jpg. Let's add that. Let's send that to the back end. And let's have a look at our rendered response we can confirm that this is the same request because we have the same image. So thinking a little bit about file path traversal, what we would typically do is use a traversal sequence. So instead of 65.jpg, we'll actually use a traversal sequence to navigate directly to our Etsy password file. So this is going to cause a request to come up out of the directory where these public images are stored, eventually reach the Etsy folder, and then retrieve the contents of the password file. However, like a nice secure application, those traversal sequences are being stripped. So as a simple example, let's take the dot dot dash, which means to come up a directory. So the server is taking the string and it's searching that string for any instances of the dot dot dash, and it's then removing them from the string, and then it's continuing to process that specific address or that string that we've provided and returning the corresponding file. Now that's not all that the backend should do when stripping these traversal sequences. Once it's stripped the traversal sequences, it should then check the modified string to see if there are any traversal sequences that remain. So why would any traversal sequences remain if it's just been coded to already strip them? Well, imagine we did something like this. Instead of dot dot dash, we send four dots and two dashes, four dots and two dashes, four dots and two dashes. Now what's going to happen is the server when processing the string is going to say, okay, here is a traversal sequence. I've been coded to get rid of that. So let's remove it. Let's remove every instance of two dots and a dash because we don't want that information from the user. That could be dangerous, right? Because then the user might be able to launch a directory traversal attack which is very bad from a security point of view. So we've sanitized our data. What are we left with? Well, with the way that we crafted the string, we're actually still left with three traversal sequences. So this is where recursive sanitization comes in because what the server should actually do is keep checking the string until it reaches a stage where there are definitely no more traversal sequences left in the string. So let's undo our modifications and let's submit this double traversal sequence string as part of our file name param. So we can just choose apply changes. We can now see it's there listed as our file name param. Let's send that. Let's have a look at the response. And there we go. We have the contents of the Etsy password file. So this is one possible workaround if a server is sanitizing traversal sequences. Is the web app sanitizing those traversal sequences correctly? So I hope you found this helpful. This was a file path traversal or directory traversal attack. And we were able to bypass the traversal sequence sanitization because the web app was not sanitizing recursively. Thanks very much for watching guys.